What is going on, Redskins fans? This is JD coming out to another video from Redskins Rant. Hail to the Redskins. Uh, before we get started, uh, follow me on Twitter, Redskins Ranter. Please like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. We got 208 followers right now, subscribers. I want to get to 300 before the season starts, and I just want to grow on that. Um, talking about the game last night. Um, first thing I want to talk about. Uh, I mean, it's the preseason, so let's not get carried away. Let's not panic. Let's not, I mean, let's not burn the house down because the Redskins lost the preseason game. Let's, let's not panic, okay? It's not a big deal. We, it's all the only preseason. Um, people want to freak out and go crazy because we lose the preseason game. It's not a big deal. Um, some things you can take away from it as being like something serious that we got to work on. Some things not. So first thing I'm going to go over is our first drive, the the uh, Browns go boom, boom, boom. Six plays down the field. Uh, Baker Mayfield gets like 76 yards on the first possession. Two minutes, gets a touchdown. Some things on that. First off, none of our starters were in the game. The only starter I think played last night for our defense was Ryan Anderson, and I don't even know if he's a starter. He might be a starter. He's like on the bubble of starting or being a backup. Um, we did not have Josh Norman. We didn't have Landon Collins, Quentin Dunbar. None of those guys were in. Um, two of those plays, on two of those passes, Troy Apke um, was close to intercepting the one in the end zone, or he was close to intercepting the first, first down conversion they had. So, let's not panic, okay? Everyone needs to not freak out and panic. Landon Collins would have totally had those interceptions. I'm confident that I think Nicholson would have had those interceptions, or at least batted the ball down. So, it's not panic, all right? None of our starters were in. We didn't have any pass rush. We didn't have Jonathan Allen didn't play. Jerron Payne didn't pay, play. Kerrigan didn't play. Matt Ioannidis. So there was no pass rush. So let's, let's calm down. They had their starting offensive line in. They didn't have OBJ or Landry, but they had other starters in. They had their starting running back in, so on and so forth. So everyone needs to just calm down about that series, okay? Was it kind of alarming at first? Yeah, but once I listened to the, the broadcast a little bit, None of the starters were in, so I'm less worried about it now. That's the first thing. Beyond that, um, most of our defensive players, like the second string defense, play pretty well. I have some standout for de some defensive player standouts. Uh, running wise, we had pretty good run defense for the most part. For the uh, whenever like the backups that'll get playing time are in, um, for the most part, uh, I, I I saw some good things out of Jimmy Moreland. It seems like they were targeting him a lot and testing him, but. Jimmy Moreland was playing what would be a starter. Galloway will be a starter for that team. He's their third receiver. He's part of their slot receiver. So Galloway will be a starter for the for the uh, Cleveland Browns. He's a good player. And for the most part, he covered him pretty well. He, they'll look at the stats and they'll say, oh, he gave up seven catches. Yeah, but they were strictly going after Galloway to get him, get him going. And he almost had an interception in the end zone. He knocked down some other things. There's a goal line stand with him and Cole Holcomb. Cole Holcomb, to me, for the most part, did well. He did have some plays where he got sucked up on play action. But for the most part, those two stood out to me when it comes to defense. Ryan Anderson stood out, too, um, for being the only guy who's a starter, so to speak, or a bubble start. Um, he seemed like he did pretty well, had some tackles, got some pressure on the quarterback. Um, we didn't see any of our backups that we really, I really wanted to see. Relford, who led the uh, Big 12 in sacks last year, didn't see him. Um, Tim Settle did pretty well. So a lot of guys did pretty decent. We didn't have any, like, huge blown coverages or anything. We just played a decent game. The biggest problem we have is our offense. And um, I'll get to the offense here in a minute. So I'm trying to think of anyone else stood out to me uh, for the most part. I mean, we had some opportunities for some picks early. Like I said, that first drive, two opportunities for picks. Uh, Troy Apke, like I said, he's, he's, run, he's young. He's wet behind the ears. He's, he's young. He's, he's not quite a rookie. He's, full. he's a, a year past rookie. He's a sophomore year. So he probably just hesitated like a half a second on those plays. And the plus he's not as athletic as Con Collins. Collins would have probably had those plays. He'd have probably either not knocked it down or, or probably would have had an interception on either one of those plays. So, and we had no game film on him. We didn't know what they were going to do. So can't really blame him too much. But after that, we settled down. We had a goal line stand. We forced a turnover. Um, so let's look at the positives. Jimmy Moreland, I thought he'll be our slot. He'll be our slot cover guy. He really will. Um, he will be our slot cover guy. I 100% I, I think that he will. I think he'll end up starting as our slot guy. 
Um, not starting, but he'll come in as our slot guy, kind of like Kendall Fuller was a few years ago. He really stood out to me. He was anywhere there was a tackle to be made, he was close. He, he's, he has great, he's great, he has great um, football awareness, and he was right in the vicinity all the time. Okay, so the offense is the one that uh, I want to talk about. First off, Case Keenum. Case Keenum actually looked like he was a little bit more composed. Um, it looks like to me that the Browns really brought the pressure on him and they didn't bring the pressure on Haskins. Um, Case Keenum didn't seem like he had a clean pocket for most of his throws. And he made some good, he still made some good throws, but for most of his throws, didn't seem like he had a clean pocket. Um, the Browns really coming after him, whether that was intended or not. And also, they had Donald Penn in protecting Haskins. They didn't have Donald Penn in protecting Case Keenum. I don't know what that's about. Maybe he was just, maybe just had him in at backup. They didn't want to play him at the starter role. I don't know. But it seemed like a coincidence that the, the second Haskins came in, um, Donald Penn came in and started at left tackle, which gave Haskins his blindside protection a lot better than Case Keenum. Case Keenum's blindside was not very well protected. It was it was? I, I don't want to say atrocious, but it was pretty bad. Um, he was underdressed the entire time, but he still made some good plays. It looked like he had better control of the offense. It looked like uh, he read the field better. He scrambled pretty well, so on and so forth. Um, like I said, wasn't the greatest, but he wasn't horrible either. He gets about like a B minus in my book. He didn't have any turnovers. He did have a touchdown pass. And everyone's going to say, like, well, anyone could have made that pass. That's not true. I've seen guys wide open, and they're overthrown by 10 yards. Okay, and I've seen guys, and also Robert Davis, you see that wide open, and you drop the pass. So that happens to people all the time. So, okay, so that being said, who else did well out of that squad? I think Shamaji Piran actually did pretty darn well um, running the ball. Reynolds didn't do bad either. He was the backup. Um, those are the only two running backs I recall seeing. If there was others, I, I apologize, but I don't recall seeing any other running backs. Um, but I don't dislike the way Samaj P. R. ran the ball. He ran hard. He hit the holes. Um, the problem is our offensive line, I'm going to talk about it, is, is got off. Um, I don't think Sheriff was starting. I don't think a lot of our starting offensive linemen were in. We, we just didn't have good offensive line play running the ball or passing. It seemed like it got better throughout the game, but I think that's because the Browns took out their starters. Um, For the most part, I think they took out their starters and and, and it gave us a chance to actually look decent. And not to mention our best blindside protector, Donald Penn, wasn't in during the beginning of the game. So if we... We'll see. That's something we got to make sure... We got to get a better look at and make sure it's actually pretty decent is our offensive line play. That's something that's got to progress throughout preseason. It's got to look better and better every week. Now I'm going to talk about Haskins. Haskins is a rookie, okay? He doesn't know the defensive schemes. It's a completely different coach than last year. Um, Greg Williams is not there anymore, so that would have been a little bit helpful to him and to us if he had the same defensive coach. And um, if he had the same def- that would have helped us because we know their schemes better. Haskins has only seen the Washington Redskins defense since like since he's been drafted, he hasn't seen another defense. So this is his first look at another defense. I here's my what I'm going to take away. I'm not going to take this away as being 100 serious. This is just something that's alarming to me. His first play, he rolls out, he hits guy on, on the money. Great throw, great great catch, everything. Second throw, he hits a guy on the money, and the guy fumbles. And I don't know whether it's that play or the next play he has where he gets sacked, but gets sacked and it seems like he like whether it was the play before or whether it was a sack that did it um, whether it's one of those two um, and the reason why I'm bringing those up is because maybe he doesn't handle uh, adversity very well he looked like I said he looked good on those first couple throws on the money on the money bang bang um, if kids he would have hang on to it I mean we're in field goal range and with the first two passes that what's name throws we're in field goal range um, but a little bit of adversity, and it wasn't even his adversity. It was his teammate. It looked like after that he didn't play too hot. Um, I will say of the three quarterbacks that played, he had the cleanest pockets for the most part. Um, but he also had some of the worst throws. The The first pick, first off, I, I know that was probably the route that they wanted. Sorry, I'm, I'm in Pittsburgh. I hit bumps all the time. So 
and it's a it's a pop socket thing, so it slot, it spins the phone. So every now and then I adjust it. So I saw, sorry about that. So if you're getting seasick watching this, I apologize. Um, the first throw he had, um, I'm sure it was probably the route that they wanted him to look at. So that's why he threw it. Um, he needs to put a little more air on it. If he'd have put air on it, that guy's off to the races. So those little mistakes like that, he can fix that. I mean, it's not like he, he just made a horrible read. He just didn't see the defender. And instead of putting air on it to where the guy can catch it in stride like over top, he threw a line drive and the guy picks it off. But on that play, he also had another guy wide open. He had the slant route was where the first down was. He had that route wide open if he just would have caught it. So he threw a pick six. And I've heard a lot about him throwing interceptions in preseason um, in practice. So that's the first one. The second one, I don't know what the hell he was doing. Second one, I don't know what the hell he was doing. Um, he threw it, greedy wounds, picks him off when we were driving with two minute or two minute drill, and you know they could have come down and scored. They didn't, and so it didn't really kill us, but it didn't help us put. We could have put another field goal on the board and been down 17-13 at the half. Um, but I will say some pauses about about him. He definitely has the better arm. He when he throws the ball on target. He can hit on target. When he, he can throw the ball in the run better than Case Keenum. Um, I don't mean I ain't saying much. I don't think Case Keenum's a great throw on the on the run regardless, but he can throw on the run pretty well. His first pass was great. He had a touchdown pass that the guy didn't catch. I think it was Cam it was, uh, Cam Sims back in the end zone. I will say he has more mobility than I was anticipating. They talked about how he's not a mobile quarterback. He's mobile enough, man. I mean he had, he had one where he scrambled for a first down. He, he slid too early. If he slid just a little bit further, we got a first down. But he scrambled for like seven yards for a first down, which was good. Then he um, scrambled again for another first down, which was good. Um, then he, uh, he, he, he faked the handoff. It was an option look. Um, faked the handoff and took off running with it. Got like seven or eight yards. So he didn't do horrible. Um, and he escaped some uh, pressure. And that's when he would have had the touchdown pass if the Cam Sims would have caught it. It was a tough, tough throw. I mean, what he should have done is instead of leading him to the outside, he should have led him to the back of the end zone. It had been a much easier catch, and it would, he would have landed in bounds. So that would have been the better option. But he had a guy in his face, and he made a pretty, I don't want to say perfect throw, but pretty almost near perfect throw. He couldn't have put it much better. The only thing I say is he could have led him to the back of the end zone more rather than leading him out of bounds. But for the most part, I don't think, I don't think he did horrible uh, by any stretch of the imagination. He could have done better, but he couldn't. But you know, everyone on the team could have done better. Um, so I give him about like a C minus. I mean, he definitely could have done worse. He could have gone gone out throwing more interceptions. But he's also got to do some better things when it comes to feeling the heat. Our offensive line is terrible. That'll be the. This is the one reason why I don't know if we should start. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna comment on this. The, uh, at work, I didn't have the rescue game on. I, I had to go home and watch the rescue game online. Um, the the Giants had their game. I watched Daniel Jones look like he had full command of an offense. Now, Giants don't have a great offensive line. Neither do we. Jets, maybe the Jets don't have as good a defense as the Browns. That might be a possibility. But, I mean, there is a reason that the Washington Redskins were looking to, it was like we're down to Daniel Jones or him. And I actually wanted Daniel Jones, to be honest with you. That was my personal I have a prediction on that. I said, I thought the Redskins should get Daniel Jones. If they don't get Daniel Jones... Um, look into the look into like third or fourth round and get the kid out of West Virginia, um, Greer, Will Greer. So that was my thought process. So I mean, maybe there's something to it. Maybe the maybe there's something to the kid. He is young. He only played 13 years or 13 games in, in college. So maybe he's just you know too young and he's, the game's just too fast for him. We'll see. I mean, I don't want to speculate and I don't want to just right to get kid off. I mean, it's one preseason game. He's going to get, he's going to get better. Let's just put it that way. He can only get better. And we definitely saw some things that were good about him. Um, I'm just, I'm just throwing that things out there that maybe there's a reason why a lot of teams passed on him. And maybe the Redskins were just blinded by like, Oh, he's a local kid. Let's get him. Um, so that, that's a possibility. I mean, we got, we got to look at all those possibilities. Let's hypothetically say that's true. And we could have had a different quarterback. If I recall correctly, I said in my video, I would prefer to get Daniel Jones, and if we can't get Daniel Jones, um, grab Will Greer in like the third or fourth round. He's not gonna. He wouldn't uh, compromise anyone starting wise. Will Greer, and we can basically build him up and trade him in the future. Or if Daniel Jones sucks, we can draft Daniel Jones. 
or we can uh, trade Daniel Jones to someone who might think there's still potential there and go Hooker. That was my thought process, but um, but as of right now, I, I I don't know how Colt looks. I mean, I know how the offense looked last year with Colt, and I will say we have better weapons than we had last year. Um, also, got to factor in with uh, Case Keenum and uh, Haskins. They didn't have any of our starters. Terry McLuhan played one play. Josh Dotson played zero. Paul Richardson played zero. I don't think Jordan Reed was out there. I don't think Vernon Davis was out there. So the tight ends they had were Jeremy Sprinkle, Flanagan, and the other guy, I can't think of his name, like Colts or something like that. So none of the starting weapons were really out there. Uh, Trey Quinn didn't play. So we're, we really can't gauge their production and their ability based on that because we didn't have any of our weapons out there. Um, that's not an excuse to turn the ball over. I mean, just, you know, throw the ball out of bounds. Take a sack. It's preseason. It's okay. Um, but also, it's, it's okay to throw interceptions in preseason as well because you're learning. You're learning because it's easy. To, it's better to go into a film and say, on this interception, what did you see? Well, I thought this and this and this. Okay, that. Okay, now, so the way you recognize this coverage is this. When this guy does this, this is the coverage. That's much easier to coach and much easier to train and correct then him to throw the ball out of bounds, like, why'd you do that? Like, well, I saw this, and I didn't think I had anyone open, so I just got rid of it. Um, holding the ball too long, that's something you can coach, um, things like that. So, not really too much I want to take away from the game. When we lost the game, but who cares? Some guys played well, some guys didn't play good, good at all. I didn't watch the last person. I don't care about Josh Woodrum. Josh Woodrum won't be our in our 53-man roster. So, there's kind of no point in watching that. None of the guys will be on the 53-man roster. Uh, I just know that a handful of players that I was watching um, jumped out of my screen. Jimmy Moreland, Cole Holcomb um, jumped out. Uh, Piron, as much as I'm not the biggest fan of Piron, he did look pretty good on some running plays. He runs hard. He hung on the football. That was the biggest issue for the longest time is fumbling. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much my video. Um, I'm excited to see the next game. Uh, like I said, we should not overreact to this, guys. I mean, it's okay. It's a preseason game. With by the fourth, the third preseason game, we're gonna see who's gonna start and who's not. So let's wait till then. We'll see if we actually get some starters in the games. We'll see how much better our defense looks with what my opinion, one of the best defensive lines in the league with Payne Allen and um, Ionitis. Montez Sweat didn't play. There's another player. So there's a lot of things that we, we can't really judge about the team at this moment. And for all we know, and this is what I said the other day. I said this the other day when it comes to Haskin having a lot of turnovers in preseason and Cole and Case Keenum having turnovers in our, in our practices. For all we know, and like I said, for all we know, we have a top three defense. We have one of the best defense in the league, and when you're practicing against that every day and your defensive line or offensive line sucks, and your defensive line's getting at you and you have to throw under pressure all the time and you don't have time to properly go through your reads and progress, you're not going to look good. Okay? You're not going to look good. A couple years ago, um, we played the Oakland Raiders. I think it was a Monday night football game. And we pecker smacked the Oakland Raiders. We beat them senseless. I think Beast Mode, or as I call them, Least Mode, had like 23 yards rushing with like 20, with like 15 attempts. David Carr, had, we would have had like we probably had four interceptions. We could just catch a ball. David Carr looked or Derek Carr looked, looked horrible. The whole team looked bad. Amar Cooper had like one catch, and if it wasn't for us fumbling, they would have never gotten red zone. We fumbled in. We turned the ball over on a kickoff or punt, and that, they got the ball in the red zone, and they didn't even like move the ball after that. They um, actually lost yards. So, um, so it, if. If we're like, if we look at it and we're like, okay, we have an elite offense or defense, would would the Brown the Browns look as good? Maybe, maybe not. We'll, I mean, we'll see. For all we know, the Browns have the best offense in the league this year. Maybe the Browns this year are the Chiefs from last year. I mean, we didn't see them with their two best weapons. We didn't see them with their best running back either. Hilliard will be their running back for the first eight games because of um, uh, Hunt. I think that's his name. Um, he's suspended, so he's not going to be in the first. You know, first eight games. He won't be back until week 10. They have eight games and then they have a bye week. So he won't be back until week 10. So they don't even have the rest running back. So we haven't seen them with that. They didn't have their best tight end in. Uh, Ajoku, I think is his name. So they didn't have their best weapons either. So we'll see. 
for all we know, Baker Mayfield will win MVP this year, and he's going to have 5,000 passing yards and like 40 touchdowns. Okay, he almost had he, he almost had 4,500 this year, and he only played 13 games. So, um, if you have any questions about what you what you think of the game, or about what you what I think of something, please leave them in the comments. Um, I will be doing videos like this. I'm going to try to do a collaboration video with another channel, uh, talking about the first game, talking about some things we saw. But there's not much we can truly get out of this game. I want to make it clear. We can't get too much out of this game because, one, it's preseason. Two, we didn't play any starters. I mean, if we're trying to figure out how decent our backups are, I think our backups are pretty decent if you're judging off this game because our backups had a pretty decent run defense. They covered pretty decently. Um, not great, but they covered pretty decent. Um, you're gauging Haskins on this. Okay, he has, he has better mobility than we thought. He can actually throw on the run. Um, so with our offensive line being bad, it, who would be the better option? Would it be Case or him? Both of them actually seem pretty mobile, and Colts mobile to them all. So I don't know. We'll see. It's gonna it's gonna take at least more than one preseason game for us to get a gauge and put have our be able to put our finger on the pulse of what this team actually is. Um, hopefully next game we see starters. I want to see Jerron Payne. I want to see Jonathan Allen, Ionitis. Um, we did. Well, I mean, our starting running back was Piron. He's our fourth string running back right now. Our for starters are P, or, uh, Peterson, Geis. I would put uh, Bryce Love ahead of him, and then Piron. So we're on our fourth string running back, basically. Actually, Thompson. I'll put Thompson about that. So we have our fifth string running back right now. So we can't really gauge how good our running game is. I mean, there's a lot of things we can go off of this. I don't think Eric Flowers was great, but I also don't think he was too bad. Um, he got a holding call, which I think was bullshit. Uh, he actually did a good job. You're allowed to hold inside. If the defender extends, I think that should be some leeway that, you know, it's not your fault if the defender extends. You're allowed to hold in here. That is completely legal in the NFL. If someone tells you that's holding, that's not holding. But whenever you get inside and if they extend out, it's not your fault if they extend out and, you're, and you pull on their jersey. You're doing your job of holding them where you're allowed to. And that's what they called the hold on that play, where Piron had like a 10-yard, 12-yard run. Um, so that got, that got called back. Um, that's it. That's my video. Like, share, subscribe. Please, uh, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, follow me on uh, Redskins, uh, Redskins Ranter on Twitter. Um, anything else, please leave it in the comments. Uh, that's it. That's my video. Have a good one. This is JD signing out. Hail to the Redskins.